Hi everyone, I'm Zara Zawani and I would like to welcome you to the second episode of Chain Talk. And as we promised in the first episode, we have Oscar Gizel as our second guest in Chain Talk. And we are going to have a very hot discussion today. You're not gonna miss that. And like always, I said that Chain Talk is actually a talk show for all of you. If you have no idea what blockchain is about, if you know a little bit, you want to know more, if you're really involved with it, you want to know who else is doing what, or if you're working with it highly involved on a daily basis and you just want to expand your network and you want to know the latest happenings in blockchain world. So without delaying too much, we're going to start and I'm going to ask Oscar himself to introduce himself to all of you. So Oscar, please. So it's a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Sarah, for having me today. I'm an entrepreneur from Germany. I'm dealing with blockchain technology and its use cases since I would say like around about three years. I'm a generalist and uh, I'm organizing conferences with partners in Germany one time um, a year. We call it a boutique conference where we bring together like some of the from our opinion, most um, interesting pioneers of blockchain technology to discuss and to discover the most uh, exciting issues of, of that developing ecosystem. Yeah, and in general, that is, that, is our, that is our mission. And your conferences are called Unchain Bitcoin and Blockchain Conventions, right? That is right, yeah. That is great, and I've heard a lot of good things about that. I hope I can attend next one, hopefully. So, uh, Oscar, it's just a culture that we, we always start chain talk with asking our guests to give us a one sentence definition of blockchain. Blockchain technology is a disruptive tool to reorganize systems of our society and Economics. That's very interesting. Okay, that's a great definition you just gave us. I always think that if you can put, put definitions in one sentence, then you are good to go. You can, but also expand it to a paragraph, then we can really see where you are focusing on or you are concentrating on the technology so I, to know how you think of it and how you see the technology i want you to now expand this definition to one paragraph actually that's quite tough because of a blockchain is like a it's like a in some way like a buzzword and it's like we call it like a suitcase word and everybody is allowed uh, at the moment to put every every uh, every explanation uh, he, he he's in charge with like into that into that suitcase and it's okay because nearly nobody exactly has defined what what blockchain technology is so of course it is my my own understanding so far regarding the use cases we we have dealt with um so i'm i'm a friend of of very practical definitions so you can nearly examine what what bitcoin is and um, if you do so, um, in some way, we would even like to say blockchain technology is adoption of the Bitcoin use case. And um, you can get nearly, nearly all um, determining facts out of it. So it's a technology uh, or a tool to reorganize systems in a way to be much more transparent, decentralized, uh, immutable, uh, global, so borderless, censorship resistant and um, this is really like a defining uh, these are defining parameters for for blockchain technology all other stuff is like improving like uh, the existing Goldman Sachs business or something like that yeah of course you can say yeah we're doing a cryptocurrency we're doing Libra etc etc um, but uh, you really have to look behind and to decide is it uh, is it a completely new approach to organize uh, to organize what is happening there and giving people freedom 
or is it just like improvement of, uh, of services that are existing so far? I'm sure the Bitcoin lovers are going to love this paragraph. <laughs> and please do not forget, I am the host in this talk yeah. show, so I'm not supposed to basically debate with our guests. Yeah. But I probably will maybe in future. How are you involved with blockchain technology? I'm so far at the moment, I'm more like a spectator. And um, we, we are more interested like in the spirit of that, of that, of that new ecosystem and uh, the perspectives for, for, for changing our social economic environment to the better. And uh, yeah, it's, it's our task to do, to do some really like a good business initiation and business not only means necessary like, like Andreas Antonopoulos says, it's a, it's a, a win-lose game. It can be a win-win game as well, but we have to learn again that it, that it can be that way. So mm -hmm. we are not like running our own business in like uh, delivering some tokens to other people or to sell our, our business concepts. We are more interested into the people. Uh, we are partners with, with uh, uh, amongst others, uh, LaBitcon, who are developing the, the Latin American ecosystem since years because they have high inflation, et cetera, et cetera. So they have another pain in the ass to, 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 to work with that new technology and to welcome it with open arms. And um, so, yeah, we, we are also partners with uh, Honey Badger, uh, Baltic Honey Badger Conference, who, who, that conference that is known as being the leading like Bitcoin maximalist um, a conference in Europe. And uh, yeah, of course. So we are very interested in, in, um, in the spirit and, uh, and in the, in the key drivers and bringing them together. And also to mix it up with, with people from traditional branches but that is, and the mainstream, but that is really demanding because at the moment there is no interest, uh, nearly no interest uh, we recognize. And, um, and there is also, we see some pain, but uh, the, pain is not, the pain is not big enough. <laughs> so we have to wait for the pain to grow actually <laughs> no, but and, it's, uh, and this, it's, it's yeah. difficult Sorry. It's, it's difficult not to stay in your bubble but at the moment we are forced somehow because it's 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 quite it's quite uh, it's quite challenging because people are not not interested like in social economic impacts most of the people like even bitcoiners most of them are interested like in the exchange rate in the price so one learning is if you if you're doing some public relation work Never talk about serious content. Um, start with a headline that tells about like uh, um, the how 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 the exchange rate has boomed. Yeah, something like that, and you will see it will have multiple clicks. Like another thing that 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 has like a great uh, topic headline. That's so people, very interesting. People are the same everywhere you go. So this technology doesn't help. Um, generally like to, to make better people or to create better people. It's a technology for the people and we have to work with the people also, not only on the technology. Definitely. That I definitely agree with you. And uh, the Unchained Convention, is it only a work? Are you guys only working in Germany or, or uh, do you have a program to expand globally as well? The funny thing is, um, so far we just like, we just had produced our, our, um, our conferences in Germany, in, in Hamburg and Berlin one time, um, and we have like 90% of our audience comes from, from abroad, from, from other countries. Um, so we are German-based, <laughs> very international conference. So, <laughs> so um, in general, there is no, there, there is no um, I would say, no business, uh, no business selling point to, to, to focus on Germany. Um, but at the end of the day, organizing a conference, if you do it the way we do, is, is, uh, is really demanding stuff and you better do that in your neighborhood. For that reason, like, uh, yeah, uh, it makes sense, first of all, for us to stay in Germany. Our Latin American friends, for example, they do it every year in another country. I think this December they are in, in Uruguay, before they've been in Chile, before that in, in Colombia, before that in Argentina. But that is really like, that is really, really, really demanding to do it in another country, to get in touch with the, with the, local, with the local heroes, etc., etc. Yeah. 
So are you, uh, can, can you say that now in Germany, but, but, but although you just mentioned that most of your guests are from other countries, but can you say that in Germany you're now connected to local heroes? Of course we are connected to local heroes, yes, yes, yes. But the number of, of, of local heroes or so-called local heroes that are really interested in the technology and have like um, uh, a common sense in what we're talking about or what we should talk about is really is a really small number. Uh, so Oscar, because your your conference is like you mentioned, is a boutique conference and is is a very high standard uh, place for for those who actually. Uh, participate and attend your conference uh, so I believe you must have a really good analysis of where blockchain is standing now in Germany at least or, or at least have an understanding of uh, the region so what do you think is the current status of uh, growth or, or use cases of uh, blockchain in Germany we have just there was just like a, a, a a topic on, on coin telegraph i think it was yesterday that uh, that that our government has decided to to start with licensing uh, uh, a blockchain uh, sorry a crypto exchanges and, and and wallets in germany at the at the beginning of um, 2020 and um, there is also something like our our this year's speaker uh, um, ricardo spagni um, a lead maintainer of monero uh, had that interview, he said, like, there's a there's an arbitrage, uh, a crypto arbitrage in, in in Europe, so that uh, that people um, now in the in the European Union they are some kind of free to move wherever they want to go to Malta, to Estonia, to Cyprus, and um, uh, I think like a lot of of German entrepreneurs are already in in based in other countries but serving the German market. So uh, we have like in, in Berlin, for example, where we had our conference this year, we have more than 50% of, of, of Germany's blockchain startups located. Um, wow. but, but to get inside it and where are they standing right now, it's, it's difficult to say. I think from my opinion, um, like uh, to do a good promotion job or to, to do good self-marketing is another, another thing than to really deliver solutions to the people and to the markets. When, it, when we talk about blockchain, a lot of people directly go to the technical aspects, like to developing a blockchain-based platform or whatsoever. But how your business in blockchain is, is a whole different kind of business. You're providing services, like kind of network, networking services. It's a conference where people can come and can gather together and meet, know each other, what is happening, what is the projects ha really happening, what are the use cases. I want to know why did you think it's a, it's a, a good start to have this kind of service in blockchain world and was what was the gap that you actually noticed or why do you, did you think that the blockchain world really needs such a service like i said in the beginning blockchain technology is a tool and um, we have to bring that tool or humans are the ones who utilize that tool yeah and you can do it in in different ways and if we go back like to the to the history and the spirit and the origin of bitcoin for example why this, this is the source of everything we're talking about now. Yeah? This goes back to the cypherpunks who just saw like in the end of 90s that, uh, that there will be like huge governments and, and international firms like Silicon Valley in control of our data, etc. And uh, blockchain was, or Bitcoin and blockchain um, technology was developed or is developed like to be a force fighting against that. But it can be also utilized by institutional players etc or silicon valley like we can see it now with libra that can be utilized to to um yeah to, to develop their their position being in control so um it's a it's a very serious step that we have to we have to go through if we if we if we want to decide if we want to use it for that for that purpose of another one and um it's not like we germans are very uh, we have engineers, we, we, we are like a society with people like uh, involving in, 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 in 
scientific things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in some in some way, we are very. Some of us are very artistic, and we, we are thinking about like and developing um, uh, methods and, and and going into the technological stuff. But for example, when when I'm visiting our our uh, our Latin American friends, they have a great they have a great uh, office building or like a, a social hub in Buenos Aires in the financial district of Buenos Aires called Espacio Bitcoin, and there are several several um, um, uh, startup companies based there and it's not like um, we work or something like that it's really like a, a gorgeous a spiritual cluster for blockchain companies and a lot of people that are around there and working there um, are not from a technological from a programmer uh, perspective going into that topic um, they are they are they are coming like from from uh, from uh, from organizations helping people, etc., and they say, "Okay, like blockchain technology is just one new tool we can utilize for this purpose." Yeah, and if you have like introductions into Bitcoin and and and, and blockchain technology, there they have uh, one time a week. They have like also meetups, etc., etc. But you can see that they are very close to the people, and they are dealing with their concerns, and they try to explain them how to make that how to utilize that technology for, for, for their concerns. It's another thing, like if you go on a German meetup, for example, sorry to be, to be now that, like, uh, that strict about that, but I think it helps in our discussion to, to discover what it is yeah, about. of course. In Germany, it's more like a presentation of technology, etc., and nobody is interested really in the audience, something like that, yeah? So it's another approach. And I think we can learn a lot from from our Latin American friends and others, and um, by being closer to the people and to their concerns, and not like thinking about the system, the, the code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's awesome. So that that was actually one of the major reasons I started Chain Talk as well, because I thought that it's about the time that we connect to people, like real normal people. They have to understand this tool, because. They still, there is still this guard when you talk to people that they think this is a very complicated technical uh, solution for some specific group of people in the society and they still don't have a clue on how they can benefit or they can start using it. So that was one of the reasons I started Chain Talk as well. And that is a really great point that you brought up. But one of my favorite questions that I like to ask is always about uh, the relationship between blockchain and digital transformation in societies. Like, uh, do, can we claim that more digitally transformed societies can adopt blockchain easier or the other way around? So based on your experience, because you've seen quite a number of use cases, you've seen quite a number of projects in your conferences, you've seen uh, heroes. So based on your experience and what you have observed so far, uh, what, what is the relationship between these two? I mean, uh, do you think uh, the, there are like many real cases happening in more digitally transformed societies or uh, the other way around? It's a difficult question. Um, I would answer it in that way. Um, uh, I can, cannot give any general answer on that, but I can see like the use cases that are really promising um, are like, at the moment we have two real world use cases for digital transformation regarding blockchain technology. One is store of value Bitcoin and the other one is like selling your, your company shares with the help of tokens by or ICO financing or STO financing, however you call that, with the help of Ethereum. We will have more like in the future, but the whole rest is nearly like conception. And um, uh, uh, the serious projects I have noticed so far, like are corporations between like players who are really like in charge of the technology and driven by passion. And on the other way, they are cooperating more like with um, governmental institutions and, um, and, and, and players of the financial sector, for example. And um, um, they are aiming like at sectors of our, of our uh, socioeconomic environment that are not, um, that, that don't have 
uh, working like institutional or however like a controlled uh, infrastructure so far here yeah? for example in Latin America, in one of the one of the uh, biggest favelas in in, in Buenos Aires, uh, they have started. Our Latin American friends have started a project for for the identification and like for for uh, document documentation of of equity of of real estate in that favela. But the only driver, from my eyes, and somehow also from their experience. For, for the government for, for, for the government to get into that cooperation is like to to bring that people into the system yeah but everywhere yeah. where the system is already in control it's quite difficult to install a disruptive technology because it's not in the interest of the the people who are in charge yeah of course like it's the same with the paper money like the institutions that have created our paper money system are not interested in incubating a disruptive technology of money 2.0 where everyone is in control and doesn't need a bank anymore yeah it's a natural thing so um it's not about like that is the thing like in that dimension we have to we have to see if somebody is interested to implement that technology or not yeah well that that is a very interesting point so you think or at least based on your observation weak institution is basically not an obstacle on way of adopting blockchain, but a driver, at least what, based on what you've seen. You can, see that in, you can see that in Africa, for example. Yeah, you have weak institutions, and for that reason, it's a driver for blockchain technology because the people have to take... Also, if we're thinking about, like, the people, it's always the people doing things, not the governments. Yeah, exactly. the governments are stopping it, are disturbing developments. Yeah, so, or they try to get that in, into the right line in their interest, yeah, but mm -hmm. the weaker the weaker the, the institutional um, uh, the infrastructure is, like, and the people in Africa don't have banks, etc., etc., so they have to take more self-responsibility and they will develop solutions how to, how to, yeah, how to work on that and how to, yeah. I want your opinion on where do you see this going in future? Where do you see blockchain going in future? And, or at least uh, maybe in Germany or in Europe, what, how do you see the future for it? This is also quite a difficult question. We, nobody of us has like that black, that black. Yeah, uh, black box. <laughs> black box, yeah, we can, we can ask and get the answer. But um, like we just want to know your personal point of view, because, of course, this is a very immature technology. We, like you said, when we only have two real ca use cases happening, then we can definitely not predict a good future. Uh, we have we cannot have a good prediction uh, for future. We have an exponential, I will say that way. We have an exponential innovation in, mm -hmm. the, in, 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 our, in our ecosystem. You can see it, for example, regarding coin mixing technologies so of course some in some in some countries they they close some coin mixes etc etc but peer-to-peer -peer exchanges etc so it's like from an innovational side the regulators don't have really like a chance to 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 compete with that innovation but on the other side we can see it in germany they really start to like nearly to imp to import chinese technology for controlling people yeah and they they sharpen their laws etc etc and so um what is the business case of of governments like like business case of the governments is like to to use their power to yeah to to monetize <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, of course of course like they they are in charge of uh, of 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 the power of the, of the execution and uh, and law etc etc and uh, they utilize that tool as well to to stop that development and we see like this driving force on the one hand and that protection thing on the other one and uh, we will see how it, how it will work but at the end uh, i think there will be environments that are near to what we know from china that are very controlled and also there will be some physical power factor that that um, that is working against people who want to who want to live in freedom in real freedom and there will be other environments where where we have like uh, very very calm structures and you can live quite well so 
but it's also a question of like nobody will carry the freedom to you yeah exactly everybody of us have has to work and really has to uh, uh, has to work seriously on, on, on his wisdom about technology. How can I use a Wasabi wallet? How can I use a Samurai wallet? Yeah, it, it, it's not very convenient, but it's the only way to, to reclaim your own freedom and independence. So, yeah. So, so you predict uh, a battlefield in future? Of course, it will be a battlefield, and uh, we can see that, 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 that. Uh, that situation right now after Libra uh, got into that market or Silicon Valley stepped in, into that market that uh, nobody, there is no chance to, to, to get out of that room. Yeah, there are three parties now. We have Silicon Valley, so the big tech, we have, uh, um, the, we have uh, the, the, the national states and institutions or banks in control. And on the other hand, we have that crypto anarchists and uh, all have another agenda and we will see we will see how that will develop but uh, in, in my opinion the national states really don't they don't have a serious chance in the middle or long term to compete with with silicon valley and so it will be like we as users have to have to reclaim our 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 our, our freedom against like silicon valley and codes so at the moment, the battlefield is, is very structured, but soon there will, there will be uh, more anarchism, I think so. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing because, of course. because, uh, uh, because we are, I, I think we are not well, well advised to be, to be very afraid or something like that. Of course, they want to make us afraid all the time and they say, oh, don't put your money into that and into that, give it to us or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. This this is basically one of the points that I love discussion about. But unfortunately, due to our time limit, yeah. we're not going to go further with that. But definitely, we can uh, discuss this again if, in future. But before we uh, end this, I want you to, because I'm sure there will be uh, people who want to know about Unchained Convention or they want to know how they can uh, take part in it, if they are running a business or if they have anything to do with blockchain. Uh, is it like uh, whoever wants to be part of this uh, on chain convention conference, they have to apply and you have to approve them to be part of it because this is a very special kind of event, right? Of course, we have only, we have only one stage and we are not like consensus, for okay. example. We have like 250, 300 attendees at our event. And um, so we keep it intimate and also to incubate that, that network business and uh, and uh, to, uh, of course, everybody can con contact us. We don't have like a, a staff pool with 20 people running that. So I'm looking forward to get, to get your co uh, comments, to, to get your proposals. And we decide from year to year how we, how we continue with that, with that event series, uh, saying that it's the same with our Latin American friends. They do it the same. And uh, so, yeah, uh, we have to be flexible in our, in our environment. We are trained to have it very, very strict and to plan for years, but it's not possible anymore. That's also due to that, to that new philosophy of decentralization, high, high dynamic in the markets. So, exactly. yeah. And we, 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 all, we, also, we also decide on, 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 on every event what topics to pick up. This year we had like lightning, uh, um, especially lightning scaling and privacy for Bitcoin and co. Uh, and... Uh, but next year, maybe it's gaming. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Let's see. That's and we great. Also, and yeah. we are, we're always looking for, like you said, controversial discussions. And yes. um, <laughs> so I'm also very interested to, to, to read some of the comments here. And uh, like I say, that's also, I think that's also uh, m uh, your, your, your first guest, Theo, who was Theo Goodman, who was yeah. also our, our moderator of, of, of our very first conference day. He said one time, he said, everybody's talking about diversity, but only there where, where it doesn't cause like any pain. So the real shit exactly. is diversity in ideas. And uh, I think we should <laughs> integrate that. And yeah, <laughs> I hope I, <laughs> I, 
I think I, I think I, I had I had a very great choice to have dinner with you and Theo in Germany <laughs> in Frankfurt because we had a really great discussion there. But uh, yes, uh, thank you so much. But you are very very right. We all uh, talk about the beautiful uh, concepts coming up until it's uh, there is no pain. Then we stop talking about it when the pain starts to appear. <laughs> That okay. is very true. I'm going to share all of your contact details so people can contact you in case they, they need. And uh, I would like to thank you so much for taking part. And uh, I really appreciate this. And uh, this is great. And I wish you success in Unchained Convention. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure for me being here. And I'm crossing my thumbs and I stay tuned with your further episode Definitely. of what yes. we're doing yes yeah thanks for Thank bringing you. that to the people as well yeah yes of course thanks everyone for watching us and uh, please don't forget to leave us your comments your questions if there's anything you would like to ask oscar about or if you have any comments about our discussions so please do not hesitate to write to me or uh, leave comments here and uh, for now i'm gonna say goodbye until next episode bye